before we can talk about probability, we need to have some common notation to make what we say a bit more concise. For example, we might want to ask what is the probability of rolling a six on a die? This d6 means a six-sided die. Now, we know that this probability is one in six because there are six sides on the die, and we assume that each outcome is equally probable. But to make this more concise, we'll define a random variable. Specifically, this random variable x is the value of rolling a d6. Now given that we've defined this random variable, we can ask what the probability is that x will equal 6. And as we've already indicated here, this equals 1 6. In fact, all outcomes on this die are equally likely, so the probability that x equals 5 is also 1 6, all the way down to 1. Now you'll notice here that all of these values are fractions, and in general it must be true that any valid probability is between 0 and 1, which we can indicate with this inequality, which holds for all values of A. So this must always be true. A value whose probability is 0 will never happen and an outcome whose probability is 1 is guaranteed to happen. It's also the case that we can look at all of the possible outcomes. Now I didn't list them all, but we know there are six possible outcomes here, and if you add up 1 6 plus 1 6 six times, the result will be 1. This is also true in general for any random variable, that if you take the summation across all possible values that A can take on of outcomes for the random variable, then this summation should equal 1. So just as a refresher, this is the Greek letter sigma, and what it means is that I'm adding up every possible value that can go in this expression. Now, if A were 0, we could still ask, what is the probability that x will equal 0? Well, that probability is 0 because 0 is not on the die. Likewise, the probability that x equals 35 is also 0. So this will happen um, to come out to 1 even if we put in values for a that can't come up on the die because only the real die values will have non-zero probabilities. Now, let's say we have a second die, and we'll use a random variable y to distinguish the two, value of a different d6 roll. And you may want to ask, what is the probability of rolling doubles given that x equals 5. So we have two die that we're rolling. One of them already came out to 5. And so what is the probability of rolling doubles? Now we can express this by saying, what is the probability of doubles? And then we use a vertical bar to indicate given x equals 5. Now, the use of doubles here is sort of nebulous and ill-defined. We'll clarify this in a moment. But what I want to focus on now is this vertical bar, which means given. 
this is a conditional probability. This is the probability of this outcome assuming that this outcome happens. Now, because getting doubles will require y to be 5 as well, what we're really asking is what is the probability that y equals 5 given that x equals 5. Now, in general, when you see an expression like this, this is always equal to the following. It is equal to the probability of the thing on the left of this bar and the thing on the right of the bar all divided by the probability of the thing on the right of the bar. This is simply uh, an equation that holds. This is how conditional probability works. But we have this expression here, which is a completely new probability, the probability that two different things are true. Now, in terms of our notation, this word and will generally not appear. In Boolean logic, a little caret is used to denote an and, although we can also use a comma, and that's what I'll mostly be using. So the notation for this will be probability that x, e sorry, that y equals 5 and x equals 5, so the comma means and, divided by the probability that x equals 5. So this was all just notation. But there's another important thing we can learn here. In particular, we know that if you roll two different die, um, two different dice, that there's no connection between those two rolls. So asking for the conditional probability of this outcome given this outcome is a bit silly because this outcome has nothing to do with this outcome. That allows us to say the following. X and Y are independent. Now, because and only because they are independent, it is the case that the probability of both of these outcomes occurring is equal to the probability of the first outcome multiplied by the probability of the second outcome. And once again, this is because of independence. This would not be true otherwise. Likewise, the probability of the outcome y equals 5 given that x equals 5 is simply equal to the probability of y being equal to 5. This is also because of independence. So these are general facts that you should memorize, but they are only true when the two events are independent, or the two variables. So let's look at what would happen if we had two variables that were not independent. Specifically, I'll define h to be a random variable of whether or not someone completes all homework. Now, you may say that you shouldn't leave this up to chance. It's not really a random variable. And you could be justified in that assumption. But randomness is a way also of modeling uncertainty. And from my perspective, whether or not students complete homework can sometimes be considered a random variable. Similarly, I can have another random variable A for someone getting an A 
in the class. So we have two random variables, and these random variables are also a little bit different from what we've seen so far in that they are Boolean random variables. They only take on values of true or false. Now we can ask similar questions as we have been before. We can say, what is the probability of getting an A in the class given that someone does all of the homework. However, these Boolean random variables are fairly common, and to make our notation a bit more concise, it's understood that this is equivalent in terms of notation to simply saying the probability of A given H. Now, if I have a probability that one of these variables is false, for example, what is the probability of getting an A given that someone does not do all the homework, so H is false, then I would use the negation symbol from Boolean logic to indicate that. So this notch means not. So this is the probability of getting an A in the class given that it is not the case that all homework was completed. Now for these Boolean random variables, we can still use our formula that we use to indicate that P of A given H is equal to P of A and H over P of H. But now we can't really calculate this purely by manipulating um, symbols. We actually have to know what this probability is in order to calculate this one. So without independence, calculations can be a bit more difficult. One last thing worth pointing out, which is simple algebraic manipulation, is that if you encounter a probability like the following, probability of A and H, it should be clear to you that this is equal to the probability of A given H times the probability of H. All I did was multiply both sides of this equation by this denominator to get this result. So although these are basically equivalent, this is another useful equation to remember. We'll talk more about probabilities and various ways of calculating uh, probabilities in the next video.